So on Tuesday night, we certainly got some surprising, unexpected, and sad news in the world of football at the announcement that John Madden had apparently passed away suddenly at his home at the age of 85, which is interesting. That's a, God, that's a terrible choice of words. Um, it's just weird because a couple of days ago, you had that special that ran on Christmas Day, you know, celebrating the life and the career and legacy of John Madden. And now you turn around a couple of days later and he's gone. Just like that. That's crazy. And, you know, sometimes you have to be careful when somebody passes away to not overstate their importance or significance. And sometimes that happens. It absolutely happens. You can say, frankly, let's look at the catalog and the length of time, like Pac and Biggie are greater in death than they ever were in life. Like, if you can't see that, I don't know what else to say. Like, there's been such a hype. It's more about the talent not realized, the potential unfulfilled, because just as they were scratching the surface, they were gone very soon. But when you look at John Madden, there is no question in my mind, when you talk about football lives, to borrow from that NFL uh, network series of football life, when you think about football lives and you think about football careers and you think about greatness and you think about impact, longevity, there aren't many that stack up to John Madden. He's easily in the top five easily and arguably as responsible as anybody for the popularity of the modern national football league game that is not over dramatization because you want to be effusive in praise because somebody just passed away and you want to avoid any criticism no like that's legit and when you talk about like top five, I'm not sure that he's two, three, four, or five on the list if you get my point. Now, sometimes my perspective looks on it a little bit differently, whereas I say somebody like Steve Sable, I was so passionate about him being in the Pro Football Hall of Fame for many years, because when you talk about the, the crafting of the game and the messaging and the story and it becoming truly America's game and surpassing other sports like baseball and boxing and horse racing throughout the 20th century, Steve Sable in NFL Films, his dad, Ed Sable, like they played an instrumental, fundamental role in that shift happening. But you can argue in a variety of different ways that John Madden's legacy and impact is even greater. You know, when you think about he was hired by Al Davis, promoted from within to take over from head coach John Roush at the age of 32. John Madden was 32 when he was given his first head coaching opportunity in the National Football League. And that was with the Raiders. And even though Tom Flores won two Super Bowls, at the end of the day, I think if you ask any Raiders fans that know anything about Raiders history, or especially Raiders fans from that time frame, they will always look at John Madden as the coach of the Raiders for all time. Every Raiders coach afterwards has been in John Madden's shadow, which is hard for a lot of you to envision because you don't know him for that. And frankly, you know, he was a head coach in the NFL before I was alive. That's how far back you go. And you talk about a career of coaching where he still to this day has the second highest winning percentage as a head coach in NFL history, higher than Vince Lombardi, higher than Bill Belichick. I think the only one that might be ahead of him might be Guy Chamberlain, and that's going back to the damn 20s. Super Bowl champion, went to multiple AFC championship games. Like, when you think about John Madden, it's a damn shame, a crime, and a travesty based off of his coaching resume that it took all the years that it did take for him to finally find his way to the Pro Football Hall of Fame just as a coach. So he was at the very top of his field as a coach. Then he shifts in the late 70s, starting in the early 80s with CBS 
and eventually landing with Pat Summerall, they become the preeminent, dominant force in terms of commentary duos in NFL history. They are the voice of multiple generations of football fans. I know I'm not the only one that will still sit there when it comes to Thanksgiving and you turn on Fox or CBS and you watch those Thanksgiving games that you don't think to yourself, my God, I wish Pat Summerall and John Madden were on the call. It was different. Madden being an early innovator of using the Telestrator and being a personality. You know, whereas Howard Cosell was a personality in term on Monday Night Football on ABC in the 70s with kind of his arrogance and his wordsmithing and his bravado. Whereas John Madden was just in your face, boom, pow, here. And he was telling all the stories and we'd talk about the most idiotic, stupid shit sometimes. And you freaking loved it. Multiple generations of fans grew up on John Madden and, yes, Pat Summerall, too, calling the big games. Madden, throughout his career as a color commentator, spanned multiple decades. I think he called something like 11 Super Bowls. You know, when you talk about Tom Brady's first Super Bowl against the Rams, you know, a few months after 9-11, and you're talking about Brady in that final drive, and he talks about what Tom Brady did just gives me goosebumps. I can still remember that 20, almost 20 years later. John Madden is, as much as anybody, the voice of the NFL for all times. I think he won something like 12 Emmy Awards. So to go from one aspect of football as a coach and become I'm great there, he's a Hall of Famer just on his coaching resume alone. You don't even look at the other com contributions. But you talk about elite level coach for a decade, absolute elite creme de la creme, still the measuring stick to this day for any and all pro football, college football, does not matter, commentators like John Madden is the head mother effer in charge of all that you see and hear when it comes to commentators. The all Madden team and all this other stuff. The turducken, you, what you do is you take a turkey, stuff it inside of a duck and set of a turkey, you got a turducken. The fucking Madden Cruiser, like you could go on and on and on. The Miller Lite commercials of the 80s, like I... John Madden became one of the marquee seminal personalities of the National Football League as a commentator in the 80s and 90s. That is beyond dispute. There is also no question about it. We think about Fox, the network now, as being part of the Big Four, but back in the 90s, especially in 94, when they acquired the rights uh, to the NFC package from the NFL, uh, it was a big risk for Rupert Murdoch. It was a big risk for that network. It was a big deal at the time. And as they were looking for vases and they were looking for voices and they were looking for people to bring them credibility, you know, as CBS lost that package for the NFC games and the transition over to Fox, who were the names that they needed to bring in to establish that credibility? It was absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt, John Madden and Pat Summerall. When those guys came over to Fox, like that made Fox in terms of their NFL coverage. Sure, you had Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and others that came in and certainly did not hurt. But at the end of the day, knowing that you had the absolute best commentating team in the world when it comes to the NFL calling the games on Fox, like it made a big deal for that network, even though initially it was a big financial loser for them in the long term, they obviously benefited exponentially from it. And John Madden was a big part of that. So he was one of the best coaches of all time, arguably the best color commentator in NFL history. And then you talk about, obviously a lot of people are going to talk about Madden. This is a third realm where John Madden was dominant. Lending his voice, his name, his image, his likeness, his creative ideas to try and bring football and football strategy and play calling and execution to the masses. And it was incredibly successful. Now, some Madden players, some Madden fans haven't exactly liked some of the recent versions of the game over the past few years. I certainly understand that. But there is a Madden brand and a Madden loyalty. They do Madden tournaments. They do all this shit. So in this realm, when you talk about video games and you talk about football video games, 
It's not necessarily always, do you like the Madden game the best compared to like, a, we'll always bring up something like NFL 2K5 or some of the NCAA football games over the years. The reality is, is Madden football is king. They reign supreme. No matter how much you want to talk about NFL Blitz or anything else, it reigns supreme. It is the brand and we all know that. So you're talking about a guy when you talk about bringing the game to the masses, even people that aren't big football fans are more familiar with football because of Madden and because of the Madden football game franchise. When you talk about commentary and you talk about this guy was the voice of several generations when it came to the NFL, like I said to this day, and granted I'm an older sort now and a bit sentimental about things, but those two, Madden and Summerall, will always be the voice of the NFL for me. They will always be the voice of Thanksgiving games. You know, and even when it comes to the Super Bowl, when Madden was on the call along with Summerall, it just felt like it was a bigger deal. And that's no disrespect to Al Michaels and Frank Gifford and Dan Deerdorf when ABC would have the game. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody. I'm just stating what my reality is, was, and always will be. So it's a big loss for the NFL world. And when you look at his legacy, his contributions, his achievements, what he meant to the game and its growth over the past five plus decades, he stands alone. Now my hope is, and I'm not trying to make too much light of it, but you know others are gonna go there. Brett Favre has to be a pallbearer and one of the speakers at this funeral. If there is any fairness in this world, if there is any justification in this world, if there is any justice, I should say, in this world, Brett Favre has to be a speaker giving a eulogy on John Madden. Wouldn't it only feel right? Like, that's how big Madden used to be. Like, people knew that he had a huge man crush on Kill Mississippi's own Brett Favre. And you'd even have, like, Family Guy making fun of that shit when they'd have John Madden. They'd be like, ah, Brett Favre! Like, that's how big of a deal fucking Madden was. The sad, tragic thing about it is he became such a larger-than-life, kind of almost like cartoon character, personality as a commentator, and with the Madden franchise, that you forget about just how great of a head coach he was. That group of idiots and freaking weirdos that he had to coach in the 70s with the Raiders, there aren't many people alive or dead that could have handled those personalities. And John Madden did it tremendously. And if anything, he just becomes a victim of timing as much as anything else that he was in the same conference at the same time as a fucking emerging Steelers team under Chuck Noll that would go on to win four Super Bowls in the 70s. But he finally won a big one. Um, and, you know, his legacy as a coach. I mean, to think about it, he got out of the game when he was like 42 years old and he never went back to coaching. That's what's crazy about it. He probably could have been so much more and won a lot more games. But yeah, like a little piece of my football heart died when I saw this news on Tuesday night. Because for me, when I think about the NFL and especially when I think about NFL on television, one of the first names, probably the first name I think about, because he was a voice of my generation for sure, was John Madden.